All right, guys, how about a uh, ultimate budget build? I think that's what everybody loves to see. We're going to go for the, the used parts, 16 single. We are going to put a performance cam in it because that's what I like to tell you guys to do, um, that I like to do on my engines. So we have our cam assortment over here. So we've got like all kinds of stuff. We've been playing around with them. We figured out ones that we know will work really well. Um, so we're probably going to put in this one. The 268 we took out of the uh, 1835. It's kind of a versatile cam. It's between a angle 100 and a 110. We were measuring stuff. We figured out a couple things on that. Uh, we're not going to get that right now, but it's kind of between those two. And it's got a different grind. It, it's less uh, lift and more duration than those are than the 100 or the 110. So it's kind of a different ratio in there, but it actually works really well on a lot of different applications. Um, so you could even, you could say if you were going to do something like this yourself, you could go with like say the Ingle 100 and then, or the W86. We really like the W86 cam and you could add a ratio rockers to it as you decided to put more features on it. So let's say you decided to put dual port heads or if you went with the uh, 88 thick walls and then put the big valve heads for the 90 and a halfs, that would go on something like this, but I don't know if I would do that with this case. This case is a little marginal. So let's just kind of show you guys what kind of things to look for on those cases. Um, we noticed that this one here has had a repair here around this thing. Not, you know, this is a marginal case, okay? This is not a like a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, well, it's actually, it really is a winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's had a repair here. Looks like the air was broke off. May not be affecting the oil. This engine did not leak, so that's one of the reasons that we are running this case. Um, and it's been repaired. Here looks like you tried to weld it. You know, this is a typical number two, um, number one. Uh, it's actually number one. And it, uh, number one problem that they have um, right here in this area. And eventually that stud's gonna pull we would not sell this engine to anyone, um, but it's going to be great for just a spare engine for the shop just to have around in because we don't need to buy anything. Like, I would not put machine work into this case. I would not do... It's already at 80 right now, so it's already been... It's been line board up to 80, so it's really kind of opened up. Uh, and so what we're going to kind of do is we're going to put new main bearings in, new rod bearings in. We found... We scavengered and found some good or fairly good um, cam bearings because we're not going to expect to get a lot of miles out of it. The cam speed is half of the engine speed. So they last quite a bit longer. Um, so we're going to go that way. We're going to put some reground lifters in here. And then one of the other things we just were doing right now is we decided to pull the valves and the heads. And if you look at the single port, this is something you guys can do, and this is you can just use this for reference ideas and stuff like that. Is we're actually going to, if you see this, this is the exhaust port right here. This is the, this is the, uh, what's this damn thing? This is the valve seat here, and then past that there's some aluminum. We're going to shave a little bit of that down to open this up so that the valve, so that the air can come out of that. If you can see, it's really, really restricted on the exhaust side of the single port. So I feel like that's a big, big downer for these single port heads. And we're going to show you guys how we do it. And maybe you could use that as reference to try and figure this out. Maybe you've got two or three sets of... What I always recommend if you're doing any kind of porting is take an old cracked head and then practice on that one and see if it works. I mean, we've got three or four sets of single port heads, so we're not worried. If something did happen, we can just grab one of the other ones we got. And we noticed this one was kind of beat up here from uh, something got in the cylinder. That's not really going to affect anything. That could be machined off. We still got to check the CCs on this. We may clean up this intake side just a little bit too and just kind of give it a little more flow so it flows a little bit nicer. And we're hoping that that's going to make this thing run on the stand a little bit better. Maybe get a little more watch from you guys on that. be fun. So we're going to do a will it run when we get it done, of course. And we're also going to run you guys through this build so we had these barrels we took off of uh, that single port engine if you watch the teardown on the 1835 at the end there was a single port engine uh, this is the barrels from that we cleaned them up gave them a little paint um, and then so they don't rust as quick 
and we put the uh, we honed them out real quick. Um, they're in okay condition. The we checked the rings. We did put the rings in. Checked the ring gap. They're within specification. So we're just going to run the same rings because I remember I replaced the rings on this or something. And at one point I just was just repairing it. It was like, again, you know, this was like an engine that we were just kind of using to throw in that bus. I wasn't really planning on using that engine forever in there, but it was just something to get it running and moving around. So maybe you're in that position and you, you don't have the money to go out and buy the aluminum case and all those other things. And you could put something together temporarily to run your car. And this is kind of what that video is about is to kind of do one of these like used parts backyard build. So we had this uh, crankshaft, looked like it was pretty good. It's a 2020, you know, we used to never build these at 2020 back years ago. Um, we have a good set of decent rebuilt, they were not too many low miles rebuilt rods. So we're gonna run through and put these to, you know, we checked them out, we, we checked here, check for run out um, to make sure that they're not oblong, okay? Those are all the things you should get in your book, you know, uh, and you get your book out and you check, you know, what, what the actual run out can be. And we also checked the crankshaft here and we checked it here and checked it, you know, checked it all the way around each journal and made sure that there's no, it's within specification for run out. So if it's too wide and then too narrow, there's too much in there then that crankshaft needs to be machined. So, or maybe you would, you know, I'm, you, I'm just saying for your situation, maybe, all yours needs is a crankshaft to be the Craigslist or, or be this type of a cheap um, poverty rebuild. And maybe you're just going to do just a, uh, just a, maybe, maybe you're in that situation. You're just trying to get something running. Uh, and so this might kind of help you understand that this will run. This engine will run, I'm sure. And you'll get to see that at the end. So I don't know what else we're going to put in here. We're actually going to throw an uh, alternator stand on it. We got that over there. Um, we got, uh, like I said, we're going to use this uh, 268 was a little bit, I think lifters were just on the edge. Not terrible, not worn out. The cam lobes are, I mean, within less than a one thousandth apart. They're really, really tight. Uh, seems like they're okay, but the lifters probably took the brunt. Um, so, but we, you also look at, you know, the, the from here to here. We want to make sure that the the lifter isn't worn, you know, more in the you know worn the edges than in the middle, all those type of things on the lifters to make sure. I mean, on the cam to make sure that it's not um, going to wear those lifters right out. We don't think it will. We think you probably get at least fifteen thousand or twenty thousand miles or more out of this engine. Just I mean, just estimating. Have no really, I have no idea how long it's going to last, but it'll at least when it's done, it'll run. It'll move stuff around here if we do break down and we need an engine, we can grab this one, throw it in. That's the sort of thing we're kind of building right now. So we even have a light and flywheel. How about that? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to put that on or not, but we also have a six volt, 12 volt um, conversion flywheel. It depends on which one we're going to put in. We don't know if we're going to stick it in a car or not. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll throw it in the blue bug, go for a drive in it and let you guys see how this one runs. Uh, so maybe you can give you some ideas of what a cam can do to your single port engine. It actually really helps a lot for a, for a single port. It can actually really bring it up. And as I say, I always recommend putting a cam in everything. You know, put a performance cam in a stock engine. And then that way, if you decide later on, let's say you build an engine like this or, you know, a cheaper engine and you decide, well, I'm going to put some barrels on it and I'm going to kind of stair step myself into a, a bigger motor. You could take and put the 88 uh, thick walls, they have those at AA, and then put the uh, 90 and a half uh, big valve heads on it, and you'd have a little screamer for a little while, I mean, until the case gives away, you know. The worst scenario on this here, on this thing, worst thing we're looking at possibly is this repair, where was that one? Is it on this side? On the number one in the back. Um, it didn't leak there. There's, you know, we got to kind of think about what you're doing. It did it leak here? No, it didn't leak here. And the other thing is, is what's the worst scenario that could happen? Is that may crack eventually through, um, and there is no pressure there. So, if it did, let's say it did start doing that, you could pull the cylinder tin off and just cover that with silicone, and uh, it probably lasts quite a long, quite a bit longer. So. Those are the types of things. If it's if it's cracked somewhere where there's pressure, where there's in the oil galleys, 
or one guy even said galleries. All right, so I'm going to show you kind of in a little bit of stages here what we're doing. Oh, man, god damn thing. AFL. So what I've done, if you look here, I've just taken off that whole edge around there, and it used to look like this. I mean, that's actually a pretty large difference. It opens it up about almost a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to take out some of this boss a little bit. I'm going to clean that up. We've got plenty of guide in there, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, these are kind of things you could do if you were... The reason I'm showing you guys some of this stuff and doing this is because let's say you've only got single port heads right now. And maybe you're on a really tight budget. This is kind of a... Like I said, this is a poverty budget build. So... Maybe you're on a really tight budget and you you know you're trying to build something and then little by little you could take this let's say you start out with 1600 maybe you did the bottom end really good i did show you guys earlier the case is kind of trash on this thing but i mean it's not trash it's it's okay for just to get around tar town motor and you could do it kind of like this you could start out with a single port you could go from here to the big valve <clears throat> heads I would say go to the 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 90 or a 88 bit thick walls and then get the 90 and a half heads and put it all together on the same time. If you look that up, you'll kind of find out what I'm talking about. They are slipping uh, for the 1600 block and then you can put the 90 and a half heads and then later on, let's say you decided to do your bottom end. Um, so you started out with an engine like this, you could stair step your way up into the engine you want. So you, as long as you don't blow it up. You know, if it gets to the point where the rods rattle or something like that, shut it down. That's the main thing. Um, but let's say you did, you know, this this way. You start out with a 16 single. We'll open up the ports while we're doing it. Going to get it to flow a little bit better. And then uh, we're going to little by little, we're going to show you the kind of the stair step into the, you know, performance engine. So I got this head done. I tried with the main thing to do is try and match whatever you did to this port to that port and the same thing to the other head kind of get them all together and look and then take your valves out in order so that they're uh, you know so that you put the same one in and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lap them using lapping compound this is this is again this is the budget motor I'm trying to do it yourself um, and do it as cheap as possible and then we're gonna show you how to upgrade it from here so if you look here at the exhaust again can see straight into the valve now it, before there was a big edge right here and huge restriction probably opened it up almost a quarter of an inch altogether um, so that should flow a little bit better it's not going to be great flowing these are still single port heads so um, and it's you know it's not gonna be a race engine but it sure will run a lot better than a stock one just go ahead and do it Let's do it while we talk. We're doing it. Okay, how is it? we have this little tool here. These are really handy to have if you can find one. If you don't have one of these, you can use a socket. I mean, you can make something like this if you want. You can old socket and make one, a ring, and a, you know, if you want to make your own. Or you can, uh, there's just a million different things you can do with that. A lot of ways you can take the valves out, but these are kind of handy. I think our old shop used to have one that did all four at once, but I don't remember. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just like that. All right, we'll take all the we take all the valves out, and we're gonna um, port this other head. So the gears, all right. So the gears are cooking. Uh, one of the ways to do it is hot plate. Another guy uses a propane torch. But you got to be careful not to overheat that gear. If you melt it a little bit, it's toast, and they're a little bit expensive now. With you know. But uh, remember, my old auto teacher, teacher used to always use, he used a, uh, a coffee can, he'd fill it up with oil, and he'd take the oxyacetylene torch and heat up the oil until it was boiling. And then he had them, had the gears on a, like a little wire. He'd pull it out and slide them on. That's another way. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So you, either, I'm just giving you some ideas for whatever you have for resources where you're at. First thing we do is slide the bearing on, make sure it's the right way. It can go on there upside down. Little dot down towards the flywheel. Ooh, gotta get them nice and uh, flipped over. These bearings here, they're alright. They're not quite as good as the Klobenschmidt, but a little cheaper. Of course, we're going for the budget rebuild. 
All right, so we take our paint, put it around the hole, drop the bearing in place, and then you can see how far off the oil holes are. We're gonna go ahead and trim that little area. We'll come back into that. We'll show you what it looks like after we're done. Well, for example purposes, and just because we have it, we're using all used parts. You can, just, If you wanted to, you could get uh, new rebuild parts, or you could do the old uh, search piece by piece and start measuring stuff. All of these we've all we measured and we checked everything and made sure that's all uh, within specification. There's the crankshaft we checked, you know, all the way around each uh, um, journal and made sure that it's not uh, oblong within the specifications that are necessary. So that's what it looks like there. That's where that just to help the oil find its way to the center line because these are never they never line up with the uh, with the actual oil galleys. So if you put that little notch in there, that helps the oil get in there. We're only gonna do one of them. I'll show you the rest of them. You know, you can do all do all the bearings the same. Again, this part would be this right here, the where the pin goes is towards the crankshaft. All right, make sure your dots are up. Sometimes we give them a little tap. You gotta be careful with that. They all go on a little different. And then the retainer thing, spacer, and then the other gear. It's a little easier with that one. That one expands a lot more than the others. And while it's still hot, put the clip on. All right, so the clip's going on. We're going to bring you guys. Whoa! Did it just slide right on? How about that? So again, this one here is this in bearing is going to be this pin part is on the down towards the crankshaft. Slinger and the key, slinger, key. And we, we usually set, because let's pull this off with some air, you don't want to burn yourself. But you can just set it, sit there and cool off if you want. So we did, these were all rebuilt, not too, these are all low miles rebuilt rods, um, but they're not, you know, we didn't buy new ones, you can get rebuilt ones. And what they do is normally they'll put them together, they'll hone out the middle, and they'll cut this down a little bit when they're rebuilt ones and then they size them and make sure that they're all the same weight. We've already checked all that stuff. These are these are used, but we're going to uh we just got all the new bearings in. Uh normally you don't push them in from the middle. You push them in from the sides like that. Um and this is going to assemble a little bit different than the stroker engine. If you guys watch that movie, watch that video. What we did again, we put these together, measured this direction and this direction and made sure that the run out, you know, because what happens is the rods is little by little the caps start to, start to, you know, they start to go out around and we've already checked them and they are not, they are within spec. So that's how you do that. You make sure that this from here to here when they're bolted together is uh, within specification. And anyone doing your own rebuild, you absolutely should have your own book and you should be going by that. This is just how we do it. We are not showing you step by step. This is actually just, you know, a view of the process just to kind of help you see your way through something. So typically what we, what I've been doing for years, uh, a lot of, a lot of engine guys do this and some guys, um, don't is, uh, you know, they have the plastic gauge. You can put it on there. You put a little strip on here and you clamp it down. The problem with the plastic gauge is it only shows one portion of the rod. So if you have one little bad spot in your, like on those, on those uh, chromoly rods that we did on the other engine, if you have one bad spot on those, which they usually have a little spot right near the tangs that you got to sand a little bit on the bearing where the machining isn't quite right. Um, you know, it, it's not going to detect that when you put the, you put the plastic gauge on, then you go to put them on the rods feel kind of tight. So what we always do is run them, put them, hook them up, put them on, torque them, okay, and then move them around and feel if there's any tight spots. So if you're using, even if you're using plastic gauge to check, okay, you should always turn it around, feel it, move it back and forth, see if there's any loose spots in there in case you missed something on your, when you were doing especially a used parts rebuild. And you should go around and just feel everything and make sure it feels tight but not yeah, you know, not hard. Not it should be to the point where it's not, you know, it, it doesn't stop on its own very easily. So it just goes around nice and freely. You know, it, it's it's a feel thing that you develop after time. A lot of people will disagree with this. 
but um, I, I've done them this way um, probably since I was, uh, well, probably 17. Made some mistakes back then, but again, uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, as far as my engines, I never had one that didn't run and uh, never had one that seized up. I had several that came from a shop that other guys built and uh, from shops, and then I actually went through them again for the guys and actually fixed them, and they worked and ran in the desert for years after that. So anyway, it's just, you know, feeling is always a really important part of putting the engine together. It's not just, you know, go by whatever the spec is, put it together, feel it, and feel if it's right. If it's if it feels right, it probably is. And that's a, you know, it, that's a way you should learn that for yourself over time. And it doesn't something you're going to learn overnight. You notice on these, you don't have to use a hammer. The other ones uh, with the other, whenever it's a rod bolt, uh, typically you should be using a hammer to tap on the sides of them and the reason you do that is because it helps to seat the rod they won't seat centered until you do that sometimes so it's as an insurance policy a lot of the engine builders are going to tap the sides um, you don't want to hit it too hard just tap it a little bit to make it sure it goes down on that uh, rod so on the bolts typically that's a rule of thumb we do we tap them even if it has the shield the the uh, pins that hold it in, um, you know, and, and tap it, uh, tap it right there is a good place, you know, so that it just kind of goes together. You don't sit there and beat it to death. Just a, just a little tap a few times to kind of make sure it seats. All right. So, but on these, you don't typically need to do that. So sometimes we put one on and we, and we feel it and it feels too tight, you know, and then, that, you know, and that just happens from occasion to occasion. I mean, so take it back off, check everything again. You know, that's a part of doing the engine. You're not just, you don't just grab all the parts and blindly assemble them. You should always be feeling everything when you're putting it together to make sure that the that spins correctly. You know, you have to get that feel for it to feel like it's a part that has oil on it, not resistance from a hard spot on the crankshaft or something like that. So, you know, that's, that's we that's where you know that's the kind of talent you need to develop if you're going to be doing any of your own work and uh, that's the kind of things that we are looking at when we do ours you also another thing real quick when you're assembling it double check the bearings sometimes the somebody snakes the right strength or the box they get boxed wrong yeah, that happened we've had that happen before just you know don't ever just blindly put something together just put it together feel everything make sure that the rods turn correctly you know they feel like a rod that has just oil on it not you know there should be a slight little bit of resistance but not no hard spots where it's just like where you can spin it around and it just stops and then if that's happening you're going to need to take it back apart and start checking some stuff and we do that on every one of these it never just goes together. Almost never do we ever, put, especially use parts. Almost never does a used parts engine just go together. Sometimes you get a bearing, and the little tang will be just very slightly off, and you can just sand, sand it a little bit, put it back together, just look for some little machining problem. Take the bearing off if you're having a problem with that, like that, and you're. This is the cam bearing. This is a used one. But I'm just using this as an example. Sometimes that little tang there um, is a you know a little bit of something going on. You can sand that little thing off and not really hurt anything and put it back together and fix the problem and keep on moving. But you just got to really check everything. Found it. One of our rods we had, um, I don't know what happened here, but it looks like right, if you look right there on the tang, you see that little edge that's kind of bent over. When it's all together, we we checked it and checked, and um, that and that little thing there is pushing the bearing just a very so slightly. It made that one go on tight. It looks like there's more going on over here, but it's actually not. Um, it's but when it's all together, the rod specs out. Um, who knows? You know, sometimes you get something, especially used parts. You got to be really observant and just look for those little tiny things like that right there. And we're just going to take a file and kind of clean that up, and then put the bearing in check it on the rod we're not gonna we never will mess with this surface where my thumb is but that little guy right there that can be fixed and it can still work well but that's again like i said this is a backyard rebuild this is um 
This is not for a customer car. This is something we're just putting together. So one of the things, you know, I mean, we do all this stuff. Sometimes I didn't show you some of this stuff in the last video. Um, when we put the rods on, we'll kind of do this with them too. And there is a spec for that, for the distance in there. And again, when you feel it, if you feel it, like this one's tight. Okay. So we may take it down, take it out, and then, you know, correct that. You know, get that one to be in the right. So if you do this, feel it, and then... If you know if everything feels the same, you might be okay, but you should always check it. But, um, you know, feeling it is an important part of it. And then I always feel it first and then check it because if it doesn't feel right, more than likely it isn't. So um, we're going to take that one back and we're going to get a get the spec on that. Remember what it is. Can't remember what I've had. We always refer to the manual. Same way that we everybody else should be doing the same thing. Refer to the manual, get the spec for the rod run out here, and uh, make sure it's not too loose or too tight. Um, just little things like that, you know, you should, are, are constantly, you're checking, but you do it by feel first. Well, that's the way I do it. I do it by feel first, and then, then we check everything. So we went ahead and removed that rod, uh, and because it wasn't, it was a little bit too tight for the specifications uh, that we read, so... And all the others, of course, are right in because, again, like I said, they felt right. The other ones didn't. We double check everything at that point. And, you know, it's all right to check it, you know, on everything if you want to. Um, it, it never hurts to double check or triple check anything on engine build. But that's just kind of how we do it. And then, so we ran into an issue. What we did is we took the rod and, and, and it actually had a, a coating of a little tiny bit of scum that we couldn't get off of there because, remember, it's a used rod. And we just put it on some glass, smooth, flat glass, put some sandpaper on the glass and just run, ran it over a little bit. Kind of like how they do in the machine shop when they have a, they have a machine that does that, um, kind of replicate that machine. And of course it worked perfectly, gave it a nice smooth finish and put it on. Now we're in spec and it feels right. Two things, remember specification, feel. That's what we like to do when we do engines. So, anyway, it's uh, it, it's right now. So we're gonna go ahead and finish the assembly of the crank. We're gonna bring you guys back in. We're ready to drop it in the in the motor. Some of you guys may not know this, but that little groove that's right there is for the chisel or a punch to go in and actually do that to just hold it in place so they don't so the rod bolts don't come loose on the stock engine. Something we do on all of them. We got the cam bearings and the crank bearings in. Of course, the cam bearings are used. How about that? Man, that's really being cheap. Part. All right, so let's drop this baby in. And we got the bearings lined up. And just gonna spin them around this time just so you can do it any way you want. Spin around till it drops. Spin that one around till it pops in place. Sometimes you mark the tops of them so it's easier. We didn't feel like it on this one. Not this one. Now we're doing everything a little bit different. Just because there's a lot of different ways you can do it, you know, and if we did everything the same, then somebody might not be able to relate to that. It's kind of to help everyone. Did it drop in yet? I don't know if it no. did. I don't feel it. No traction. I didn't feel it yet. There it goes. Felt the click. I heard the click. It's weird. You'll feel it even when you rotate it sometimes if they're not right. Like I said, feel is a big part of this. Of course, we fixed that one rod. It works great. You know, the, it's, I was just going to say, you know, the spec on that is between 4 and 16. You know, these guys go, oh, you got to get a measuring thing out to measure between 4 and 16. Do you think possibly if you have any kind of idea of what you're doing that you couldn't feel between 4 and 16? That's like, you know, that's a mountain of difference. So you put the bearing over the middle, double check it, make sure it's down tight, and you know it's right. That's what we do. And we'll put that bearing in this part of the case here. 
we'll get the uh, camshaft dropped in, in a minute. So we drop in the lifters here. The new lifters use cam. How about that? But performance, of course. Yeah, I'm not going to say that this cam was like in the absolutely cherry perfect shape. Um, some of them, you know, I know some of them were perfect, but this one here uh, came out of the 1835. There's just a little tiny bit of lifter wear, of course, because it's probably because it's single relief. So, but, you know, for this engine, I mean, this thing, we're probably figuring maybe 20,000 miles out of this engine. I, I don't know. You know what? If it lasts longer than that, it's like a hope and a prayer. But um, maybe, who knows? I don't know. It's just something we're putting together to make it run. It's like having a running engine. So, might, want, might as well use that performance cam. It'll be a lot better than sitting somewhere. Ooh, the 268 is going in here. This is a good cam, I mean, by the way. Um, if you guys are looking for a cam for a 1600 to just build like a cheap engine and you're going to cheap on everything else, but you're going to put a new cam in it, uh, which I would always, I would always go performance on the cam, always. But um, if you do that, uh, the Webcam 86, uh, Web 86 is a good versatile cam, versatile cam for this engine. Um, I think you could use an Ingle 100 as well. And, you know, both of those, I think with the Ingle 100 with the ratio rockers might be a little bit too much cam for a 1600. But this Web 86 is a perfect combination because if you put it in as a uh, stock engine um, you know, it, it'll it'll really give it some nice power it'll be right for the engine and then when you decide you wanted to go up to putting uh, the performance stuff on it uh, it won't be over cammed you know while you're doing that you could be right in the right place and then throw, throw the one and a half um, rockers on there when you do the performance up upgrades and then it just per, it's like a perfect combination for a uh, pretty well built 1600 so anyway just something to throw in this video uh, anyway we'll put this cam in here and uh, check it we got the marks lined up of course always line up your marks make sure they're lined up so always check the gear lash rotation make sure everything's rotating good Double check, make sure it didn't pop out and drop out of place or something like that. And then we better put our uh, cam plug in, right? Mm -hmm. Or are we ready for that? Ready for nope, that. we got to do something else. Cut her all looped up, cam. Get ready to put in the uh, cam plug here as soon as we find it. One of the things I wanted to put in this video, I don't know if I put in the last one, the lifters need to be nicely, easily spin, no hard spots. If they don't spin correctly, that will cause cam wear. So unfortunately on this one we can't port match. Usually we port match the uh, port for the uh, but uh, for the uh, oil pump to the actual pressure hole. And this one we can't do that because it's a CB performance. Well actually this is not CB performance. This is Claude's Buggies. This is like uh, date stamped. I'm thinking... We had other parts in here that date stamped 1982, so that's when I got this engine. I thought it was 81, but I guess it was 82. That's really weird because it just doesn't make much sense that it was dated that late. But uh, anyway, maybe it was early 82, March. Yeah, that would have been March 82. That would have been about the right time I got this engine. So the guy I got it from, or the, the, the scam came in. So the engine with this, so about March of 82 is probably when this came out from cb performance so that is a pretty old piece we are going to put that on this engine um I, i'm not sure why <laughs> i forget why actually we needed a higher higher volume oil pump than what we had and so all we had was the cb um uh, claude's buggies um shattuck it's shattuck pump um by claude's buggies and uh with the uh oil filter spin on on it not the greatest, but they, they do work. It'll be probably better to have a filter than not have one. So we're going to use that on here. We're going to shove this thing together and see uh, see how it runs. So we notice the cam plug can go in either way on this one. Um, on the aluminum case motor, we were just saying, you know, it wouldn't work on an auto stick. And we're kind of going, who would want an aluminum case motor and an auto stick? Wouldn't that be a trip? You know, drive around an auto stick with a really bitching, you know, <laughs> aluminum case motor in it. Uh, not, 
Okay, this one we got to put the O-rings on here because uh, remember this is not the shuffle pin. If you watch the other video, um, that is the aluminum case. That's one of the big advantages to the aluminum case, plus the material. Um, these old mag things, you know, I'm not really a mag guy. A lot of guys love mag cases. All they ever want to use is mag cases. You know, I think the aluminum is just superior to it. Anybody who's built a lot of engines and, and who's actually seen them, you know, 100,000 miles or more after that, then you get to that point where you kind of go, you know, the aluminum case is just really good. You know, they just work, work really well. Hey, check this out. Look what I just found. I guess uh, what's wrong with this picture? Everybody makes mistakes, okay? What's wrong? What's that little notch for? You know, we had the crank sitting there. We took them on and off two or three times, and guess what? Put them on wrong. That's why you always double check. Um, we put that in this video just for you guys, so you guys would see it and go, hey, man, those things are on wrong. We knew it already. Thanks. If you commented on it, thank you. The date on our engine makes more sense because he was like 82 and we just looked on the cam gear, it said 81. Now I'm like going, I was like freaking out going, my God, I lost a whole year of my life. Because I remember 81 is when I got that engine. And I, I, like I said, I didn't build it. I would have never machined a uh, single relief case. Uh, whoever did that, the guy who I got that engine from was an idiot. You know, he, he obviously he put, you know, what, 10... 2020 bearings or I don't know he put the wrong bearings in the engine and it had like ten thousandths of of uh, Play in it on that old engine. So anyway this one here So the uh, the actually if you're wondering the CB performance uh, Claude's buggies oil pump was from 1981 March of 1981 so that's like back in the early days of these guys pretty cool uh, you know, I didn't even really catch it until somebody commented on it and I'd forgotten. Uh, but I've been seeing Claude's buggies for years and years and I guess I didn't really remember where I was seeing it, but it was every time I changed my oil. So that's kind of funny. Especially on the mag cases, we always torque these two first because if they're going to pull, it's usually the first ones that'll pull are these two. So that way you don't do all this work and then find out you're going to pulled case stud and it's no good anyways so we'll go ahead and check the torque on that check the torque on that go back and it seems like they're not pulling now we're good we can assemble the rest of the engine or uh, assemble the rest of the stuff and uh, torque everything out all right so we're nutting all this up here getting them all on just so you know this thing spins like butter it's just beautiful Man, all of these used parts spin. You know, it's funny thing is, is, we were talking about this. It's almost like whenever we get ones that are, you know, we put something together with its, its junk or whatever parts and, you know, a bad case or something. This case isn't that bad. It's just not, not good. I'm not gonna say it's. So it's, uh, but it's, it's, it'll run. You know, it's something that you can use and run and use. So why throw it away? You know. So uh, we're missing a couple parts. We're going to have to continue this again tomorrow, and we'll put you guys back in the video again tomorrow, and we'll finish up this engine. All right, so we've just been CC in the combustion chambers. You know, you always just put this thing on here, basically, you know, fill it up with water with CCs, you know, and then make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And then you come up with the calculation. We are at, like, I think 50 on these. And then uh, we're, we're just putting together the heads. Uh, the, putting together, you know, and what we're doing right now is we're going to lap the valves. So on a three budget build, of course, we're not going to take it to the machine shop and have the heads done because that's uh, a bit of money there. I, you know, Carcraft is pretty reasonable for that if you guys need that done. Um, they're probably the least expensive place for getting your heads done. Um, but if you just are a DIY guy, you want to do it at home, you can use this stuff here. They have it, I think I got this at O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm not sure. That's pretty sure I got this at O'Reilly. And you, they have two different uh, compounds. You just take the valve and twist it. Uh, and, or you actually, the best thing to have is one of these fancy things. You know, where you just turn, they twist the valve around, like suction cup tool. Um, or you can just have a suction cup. Some guys just use a suction cup and twist it by hand. Or sometimes some guys use a drill. 
and pull it from the guide side. Um, it's all up to you on that. Uh, and, you know, pull it from the other side. But you got to be really careful not to damage damage the valve stem. But some guys, it depends on how you want to do it. There's a lot of videos out on how to lap your valve. So you can literally do the valves yourself, um, save some money there. Again, this is about the cheapest way to build an engine that will run. And, you know, we're hoping to get maybe about, you know, average of maybe 20,000 miles out of this. So that's not much, but, you know, if that's, you know, with all junk parts, that's pretty good. Um, so we got our Molly pistons in. We checked our deck height. We're pretty tight. If you can see here how tight that deck height is, uh, we measured um, 45. We're going to be we're going a little bit less than 45,000, so we're going to add 10,000 shim to be between. We want to be under, you know, the stock height is typically 60 thousandths. I heard the danger zone is below 45. So anywhere in there we're comfortable with, you do whatever you want to do. We're going to try and stay between 45 and 50 at least and on this engine and uh, so we'll probably add 10 thousandths to this I think we're a little under 45 so we're hoping that'll bring our crush compression ratio if you go on CV performance uh, engine calculator they have how to you know you can put in all the numbers your your cylinder height size your deck height and all that stuff and you can come up with your compression ratio so we've got that all figured out we're hoping for around 8 to 1 even high 7s which will be a nice running engine. So that's where we're at right now. We use this tool here. This is a fly cutter. We see this little blade here. And uh, this is a tool. I think these are Jean Berg. This is an old Jean Berg thing. Chris has had it for years. And it's got the different sizes. Fly cutters are already set up for different sizes heads. It's a trade to use for the horse for it. Yeah, traded to use for the horse for it. How about that? Can always look for something like that, and then it takes a while to do on the drill press. It's kind of a slow-going process, but again, we're in the budget. This is the ultimate and low budgets. So, that's so why we're doing the single, uh, single port heads right now. Um, we're hoping that when we get this all done, you guys will stick around, look for the next videos on it. We may take the motor, you know, put it in a car, drive it, show you how it runs, and then we may drive it for a little while. For how long, I don't know. And then take it back out and then change it to dual port heads and either just dual port by themselves and then port them by hand or whatever and show you what that does. And then go to the, I'm thinking I have those, well, I have those ported large uh, opening heads. So the next stage we could open up a set of heads or just take the heads from that one that are larger and get the 88 um, kit, the 88 big bore kit and then do another video so you can see somebody with a 1600 the things that you can do to slowly build it up and then say let's say you could build that bottom end up really nice and then build a you know, like a 1776 or a 20 i would do i would just go right to the the 2007 uh, if you're going to do aluminum case so then when you get that new case and you buy all the parts for it and then you can build that nice 2007 like the bulletproof engine so a little way to stair step up to that um by just bolting on new parts to your existing build. We bolted up the flywheel and do an in-play check. I always want to mark where we're doing it. So you guys have watched the last videos. Uh, mark it and do it in the same place because the flywheel may allow me a little bit of run out in the flywheel. Just a tiny bit. And then we just do a dry check. We put it together with no shims. Find out what the distance is and then figure out kind of where the shims need to be. Alright. What do you guys think? Yep, 30, what is that, 35, 34. 34. Remember, they sell these at Harbor Freight Tools if you're looking for them, these little dial indicators. They also have a, a one that you can clamp on here that you can put a feeler gauge on. So if you, they have the, the Volkswagen supply. So we got our in play pretty much right on the money. We're about a three and a half thousandths. How about that? I think that's about nice and tight. Uh, all right, so we're going to go ahead and put the flywheel on. We do them again, silicone the bearing in, so I mean the this in, so when it dries, um, make sure the shims are oiled. Uh, silicone around this surface on the flywheel where the flywheel mates up, like right in here. And it has the O ring on this one, yeah. 
this one has the o-ring so you put the o-ring in and that's how we do it silicone and always check the flywheel to make sure it doesn't have a heavy groove in it those are all the things we normally do so we always make sure this is clean and dry then we hit a little red loctite on there on the uh, gland nut I, I think back in the day we used to use anti-seize and then you know where I used to work I can't remember they put that anti-seize on there and he would tighten it with a big torque wrench yeah we'll one, pretend we did one of the no, shops I, I will use that one of the shops I worked at they used silicone we should too. torque it to the exact you know 300 and I forget what it was it's a lot of stuff we're just gonna rattle gun it and hit it with a red loctite we'll pretend we got the torque wrench out actually we're gonna get it out we're gonna we'll torque it out off the video or you can use one of these you just use this and then it gives you a reduction for your torque wrench and you guys have never seen one of these and there it is it's right there guess what that's almost right exactly where you had it with the gun hmm. yeah you should always use a torque wrench <laughs> okay but anyway yeah torque it there was 360 foot pounds that's right that's what it was for those things i used to see that every day the 260 260 foot pounds i remember i just remember the boss going hit the torque wrench on there you know every time we did one you know it was the same number we used to yell out across the room it was always torque wrenched so we did it but it was almost exactly the same with that tool so of course i would expect that you guys can look up your own torque specs i'm just rattling them off
All right, so anyway, we got it all put together. I'm just gonna spin the filter on. I guess we'll put that on there too. Uh, we get this, it gets this little thing here. That's a nice little thing uh, from CB Performance back in 1981. Pretty cool. Um, but it'll be, it'll be all right for this engine. So anyway, we'll get this thing tinned up in the next video and then we'll have a will it run on this. So stay tuned, come back and check it out. I'll make sure you mix your comments on stuff. Um, if you wanted to know uh, where to get one of these, some people were asking about that. Uh, they have these at MA, what is it, MA Motor Works? Mid-America Motor Works. Mid -America Mid -America Motor Works. Look up uh, and, tools and, you can get them there too. and they have them there um, so it's a valve adjusting tool it's kind of cool so anyway somebody asked about that last video but anyway uh, anyway make sure you make those comments and uh, we'll see you guys on the next portion of this this is the extreme budget everything's used uh, and but everything's been checked and everything's good so it's not junk it's like good junk <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'll talk to you in the next video please like share and subscribe